Hi, everybody. Welcome to another English class here on Verbling.com. My name is Lisa, and I'm one of the English teachers here at Verbling. And in this hour, we're going to be doing a reading class. So we're going to be reading an article and talking about it as well. One of the nice things about the reading class is it's a good way for you to learn some new vocabulary, uh, practice your grammar structures, learn something interesting, you know, by reading the article, and also get to speak. So the reading class involves a lot of different things that are happening for you that are really good for um, your English fluency so that you can improve your English, your, your understanding, your comprehension, your listening skills, your speaking. Um, so a lot of things are happening in the reading class, which are really great for you. Okay, so if you want to join me and you have a reservation, then of course you can use the reservation now. If you don't have a reservation, then that's okay. You can just um, wait and then join the class with using the join class button as soon as you see it. The way it works here on Verbling is you do need to be a member to join the class. So if you're at the Verbling Dot com website right now and you're just looking at the classes that are available and you click on this class what you're seeing is a live streaming video so this is a it's a class and we're going to be having the class for one hour each verbling class lasts for one hour um, and each class is different sometimes we have classes um, like I'm having this one now with the reading. Sometimes I just did a speaking class. Uh, sometimes we have a listening class. So it just really depends on what you want to do. Uh, you can join any class, any time. And the way you join is just by clicking on the button. So I'm just waiting to see who's gonna show up. We did have a lot of reservations for this class. Um, if you're a member on Verbling, one of the things you can do is make a reservation. So if you're looking at your schedule and you say, oh, I want to take a class, you know, tonight at 9 o'clock, then you can just look and see who's teaching and you can choose which one you want to attend and then make a reservation. However, the reservations only are good for the first two minutes of the class. After that, then anybody can join. So it can be a good idea to make a reservation uh, for a class if you know for sure you want to be there and you want to go to that class. But if you're not sure and you don't know, uh, usually it's okay to just come at the time that the class is going to start and then join at that point. So um, that's what a lot of people do and that usually works. Sometimes we do have a full class. Certain times of the day can be kind of crowded uh, and other times are not uh, as busy so it just depends on uh, what you're wanting to do and and all that so I'm gonna um, get started here so if you guys want to join me for this class I don't know where everybody is who made the, the reservations where did you guys go <laughs> I know there is one other class uh, going on right now in verbally but it also doesn't have uh, very many people in it so I'm wondering where everybody went. Um, let me just put up in the screen share what we're doing. Sometimes it happens that people are having trouble and they're not getting into the class. So I don't know is, if anybody is having any trouble uh, trying to join. Let me ask you guys. I'm writing in the verbling chat there. So another thing about verbling is if you um, are not a member you get to watch the class for free. You don't get to come in and participate, but you get to watch the class, and you can also uh, write in the Verbling chat box. So if you're watching this video right now, for example, um, you can type into the Verbling chat box, and then that way we will uh, see, or I will see, what's going on over there. All right, so I'm gonna do the screen share here and talk about the article that we're going to read today. It's from NPR.org. So NPR.org is a public radio station here in the United States that's played um, pretty much everywhere around the United States. Local radio stations have NPR shows on their stations. And it's also a website where you can go and get um, information related to lots of different topics 
Uh, this is kind of a special series here, and it's called For More Millennials, It's Kids First, Marriage Maybe. So it's a kind of an interesting thing that's happening here in the United States with the younger generation of people, people in their 20s, for example, right now, maybe they're early 30s, but mostly their mid-20s. Mid uh, so this article is talking about this idea that for a lot of these people, this age group, uh, they're having, actually, they're having their kids first before they're getting married. Getting married doesn't seem to be their number one goal at this time. So that's what we're going to be reading about. Um, as usual, I put it here. So I see we do have some people who want to read along with us. Uh, so I'm going to start reading. If you want to join the class, you, you know, it doesn't matter if you had a reservation or not because now uh, people can just join. And if you want to read along with me, then you can join. Otherwise, I'm going to read and I'm going to give the class for you guys. And anybody can join at any time. So um, I'm going to get started here. For more millennials, it's kids first, marriage maybe. Decades ago, an oops pregnancy might have meant a rush to the altar. But when Michelle Sheridan got pregnant three years ago, the topic of marriage never came up with her boyfriend, Philip Underwood, whom she lives with in Frederick, Maryland. In, if anything, it was the opposite. Okay, so I like to just read a little bit at a time and then go over some of the words and phrases. And one of the great things about the reading class is this is it. This is real English. This is the English that you should want to be able to read. This should be your goal because this is how you use English in real life. You go to a website, you read an article, and then you talk about it. And that's what people do. You know, in real life, you have conversations about stuff that's going on, stuff that you've read or that you've watched or that you've talked about with other people. And this is a great way to learn useful vocabulary. And the reason why it's useful is because it's being used. So you have to learn it in order to understand what you're reading and in order to talk about it once you're once you're done reading it. Okay, so decades ago in oops pregnancy pregnancy. What does that mean? An oops pregnancy. Okay, a pregnancy obviously is when a woman gets pregnant. She's going to have a baby. And an oops means by mistake. So not planned. So when a man and a woman have sex and it results in a pregnancy, but they were not planning on it, that's called an oops pregnancy. They had a they weren't planning. It was a surprise. Sometimes we say it was a surprise. So um, decades ago, so many years ago, People, if this happened to them, if they had an oops pregnancy, this would have meant that they would rush to the altar. So to rush to the altar means to go get married. You get married at the altar. The altar is the place um, in front of the church, for example, where you stand, the, the bride and the groom, and then the, the preacher or somebody does the service, and then you get married. That's in front of the altar there. So that just means a long time ago, if you had a, a mistake, you know, you got pregnant by mistake or by surprise, you would hurry up and go get married. Um, but that's not what happened when Michelle got pregnant three years ago. The topic of marriage, so the idea of talking about marriage never came up. It, they didn't even consider talking about it. So to come up here is a phrasal verb. So to come up in a conversation. So when something comes up, it means you want to talk about it with somebody. But they didn't talk about it. Instead, it was kind of the opposite. Um, I'll keep reading here. It changes the dynamic of the household, she says. I had a friend who put off her marriage, got pregnant, and she's like, let's just wait because we don't know if we're going to be able to make it through this. That attitude reflects a sea change in family life. For the generation under age 35, nearly half of all births are now outside marriage. This family structure, once common mainly among African Americans and the poor, is spreading across races and into the middle class. <laughs> okay, hi Ruby, welcome. I'm glad you're participating there in the chat, that's great. Okay, um, so it changes the dynamic. So the dynamic 
is kind of like what happens inside the household. So what it looks like, what people are doing, how it uh, how it is living in a household. So the dynamic, it gets changed when you get married. That's what she's saying. So, you know, you might just be living with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and then all of a sudden you want to get married, and then it changes. Something changes. It's, it's different, okay? She says she had a friend who put off her marriage. To put off, um, another way to say that would be to delay. So she delayed it. She didn't want to get married. If you put off something, it means you you save it until later. You say, I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to put it off until later. So that's another phrasal verb there. It's very useful. If you put stuff off until another day, it means you're just waiting to do it. And her excuse was, uh, let's just wait because, if you that's short for because, because we don't know if we're going to be able to make it through this. So to make it through this means to stay married. You know, getting married, having kids, all that kind of stuff can be difficult, and people end up getting divorced, so they don't make it through the marriage. That's what she's saying. And this attitude, this way of looking at something is a sea change. It shows, reflects means it shows a sea change in family life. So a sea change is a big change. So this is really different from um, people who used to, you know, live 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago more. All right. So for the generation under 35, nearly half of all births are now outside marriage. Hi there, Amparo. Welcome. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm, I was wondering where everybody was because there were eight reservations, but nobody came, showed up. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I just made a reservation, but I have a, a little headache. Oh, so, no. Yeah. Okay. The but, yeah. You're okay to participate, though? Yeah. Do you yeah. want to read? Okay. Have you... Uh, did you already see from the beginning what this is about? I read a little bit already. Yeah, I've read it. The, okay. The... Okay, cool. Well, why don't you go ahead and read? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The attitude reflects a sea change, a big change in family life for the generation under age 35. Nearly half of all births are now outside marriage. This family structure, once common, uh, mainly among African Americans and the poor. It is spreading across races and into the middle class. Uh -huh. So, Amparo, since, oh, here we have Aldona too. Hi, Aldona. Welcome. Hi, guys. So, I was just going over uh, the vocabulary a little bit. So, it's just a big change, mainly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's happening. We're going to talk a little bit about it once we finish reading it, but... Um, it's just describing the fact that there are these young people who we call the millennials, and they're basically not rushing to get married. It, and so they'll even have kids, but it doesn't necessarily mean they have to get married like it used to before. So uh, Aldona, in the beginning, they talked about having an oops pregnancy, like a surprise pregnancy, and that used to mean that people would go and hurry up and get married, like rush to the altar. But now that's, that's not the case. You don't have to do that. So, um, Aldona, why don't you go ahead and read this paragraph, factor in. Aldona, I don't hear your voice. There you go. I hear now. Should I read that? Yes, please. Okay, okay. Uh, factor in education, th though, and the difference is struck, stark. Mm -hmm. Raising concerns of a new class divide among young women without a college degree, those like Michelle Sheridan, 55% of births are outside marriage, according to an analysis by the research group Child Trends. For those with at least a four-year degree, just it's just nine percent. Mhm, mhm. So, there. This part here was saying that uh, this was more common. This family structure of you know having uh, babies without being married that used to be more common. You know, for African Americans and poor people, 
Um, but factor in education, factoring in means considering it. So if you take into consideration, the difference is stark. So it means that, you know, it's a, a strong contrast there. So this is raising concerns. People are becoming concerned about a new class divide between the, you know, the, the, the classes, the poor. It's not just the poor people anymore. Okay, so this lady, she does, however, uh, not have a college degree. So without college degrees, 55% of the births are outside marriage. Um, for those with at least a four-year degree, it's just 9%. So this is, you know, basically you could summarize this paragraph saying the, the statistics show that the more highly educated you are, so the longer you've spent in school, going to college and that kind of stuff, less likely that you'll have a, a birth outside of a marriage. Um, like half of all U.S. pregnancies, Sheridan's was not exactly planned. We think we mistimed something, she says, but it wasn't really like a bad time or, I don't know, it just seemed like an okay thing to do. <laughs> okay, I'm put up. Like half of all U.S. pregnancies, Sheridan's uh, was not exactly planned. We think we mistimed something, she says, but it wasn't really like a bad time or, I don't know, it just seemed like an okay thing to do. <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting. Half of all U.S. pregnancies are unplanned is what that's basically saying. <laughs> They're surprises. Um, if you mistime something, obviously you're mistiming when you're ovulating, you don't, you're not sure if you're fertile or something and you course have sex and then you can get pregnant so that's what it means they're mistimed something um, I guess I don't really have to read you guys can just read Aldona <laughs> you can read that why don't you go ahead and read that whole thing right there yes um, I start at the pregnancy test for 10 minutes waiting for it to change understood says but then he got really happy. It was actually really cute, Sheridan said. It wasn't Sheridan's first child. Her older son, Logan, is eight. His father left before he was born. Michelle spent four years as a single mom before meeting Underwood and says she felt no stigma or fear about that. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, just to make sure we're clear, this was the guy, the, the dad is Underwood mm -hmm. and the mom is uh, Sheridan. So he, he was staring at the test just to make sure, you know, like he was waiting for it to change, hoping that it wasn't true that she was pregnant. But but then he got really happy, and so it's worked out okay. Uh, it wasn't her first child. She had already had another child by a, another father, but he was not around. He left before the baby was born. So she was a single mom before she met this guy, Underwood, but she says she felt no stigma or fear. So if you have a stigma, you feel like, oh, I'm a single mom, it's not a good thing, people aren't going to like me, that kind of thing. You feel bad about it, but she didn't. So uh, that's also another thing they're, they're saying is people in their 20s and early 30s, they don't, it doesn't matter if you're married or not, or if you're, you know, you have a kid without a dad, you know, it's, it's a lot different than before. Okay, go ahead, Ampura, you can read. Why don't you go ahead and read all the way to their institution of marriage. Okay. <laughs> there, starting from there. Okay. And even though she's now 28 and Underwood is 32, she feels no, no urgency to tie the knot. I don't want to be in my mid-30s having kids, she said, but I can be in my mid-30s getting married. And it makes uh, no no real difference. It's still somebody to spend the rest of your life with. Like so many children on the 19, 1980s and 1990s, the, the, the case when the nation hit its highest, highest divorce rate, both Sheridan and Underwood are also worried uh, about the institution of Mary. Uh -huh. So... I'm imagining you guys understand. To tie the knot? To get married. Yeah, to get married. So there's no urgency. There's no, like, they need to do it right now, you know. No rush, right, exactly. So they're not, they're not in a rush to get married. Um, and they lived 
uh, you know, through parents getting divorced and stuff. So they are wary about it. What does that mean, Apuro, if you're wary about something? You know? No, I'm not sure. Conscious? Conscious. Yeah, they're conscious about it. Or actually, it's a little bit more like concerned. You know, they're kind of, they don't really trust it. You know, they're... The institution of marriage, you know, if your parents got divorced and you, you know you saw them fighting all the time or it wasn't a good thing, then you kind of uh, you get become wary about it. You're not sure is this really a good thing or not. You know, you don't really trust it. That's kind of the idea. Okay, Aldona. Oh, hi Shabas. <laughs> I see you joined. Hello. Welcome. Yeah. You can read uh yeah, nice to see you. Uh, you can read after Aldona. She, she's going to read this part right here. The problem, not the Okay, once again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Under says, when he was a baby or when his mom was still pregnant, he isn't sure. My dad left for a loaf of bread and never came back. Sharia's parents stayed together but fought a lot. That was hard to watch, she says. I don't want to go through that and I don't want my kids to see it. Mm -hmm. So, left for a loaf of bread <laughs> and never came back. That's kind of traumatic. <laughs> 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 yeah, <I'll> see ya. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. All right, so that's, you know, when yes, you have an ex <laughs> What? That's in fine. A victory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He got, he got lost. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then, so that was unfortunate for him. So that wasn't a good experience for him thinking about, you know, his dad. And then her parents, they stayed together. So they stayed married, but they fought a lot. And so she said for her that was hard to watch. And she doesn't want her kids to go through that. So to go through something means to experience it. She doesn't want them to have that same experience that she had. All right, marriage and money. Okay, Shavaz, why don't you go ahead and read uh, that part right there. Okay, marriage and money. Money is another factor in the couple's choice not to marry. And Sheridan spent years as a restaurant server, then as a pizza delivery driver. She got pregnant just as she had managed to start college full-time with the federal aid. Underwood is a car technician, but he was going through a rough patch work-wise. It was so uh, sporadic and uh, it would go from full-time one week to 20 hours the next, he says. Mm -hmm. Good. So basically, uh, money is another factor. It's another thing that you have to take into consideration when you're making a choice. Are you going to marry somebody or not? <laughs> so she had some kind of low-paying jobs. Is that's what it, they're saying? Um, and she got pregnant just when she had managed to start college full time. So just when she had finally got it all together, so that she could actually start college. So it's kind of maybe not the best timing you could say <laughs> and she was able to um, go to college using federal aid so in the US that's one way that uh, students can get help from the government so federal help or aid financial aid is what we call that um, and then he was a car technician um, but he was going through a rough patch Shabazz do you understand what it means there uh, if he was going through a rough patch what does it mean to go through a rough patch? Uh, a rough patch, uh, I guess it's like... Uh, uh, I mean, he was in a trouble, kind of trouble. Uh -huh. or yeah, sure. That some, facing some difficulties yes. in, in his life, right, like that. Right, mm -hmm. okay. exactly. So to, to go through a rough patch is to experience a difficult time period or and, mm -hmm. and work wise means related to work. So you could go through a rough patch in your marriage, in your relationship, mm -hmm. uh, in your work, in your studies, something like that. It just means you're having difficulties. Yeah. Um, the difficulty was that it was so sporadic. So sporadic just means 
you know, sometimes he has work and sometimes he doesn't. So it, he would be working, you know, 40 hours a week and then one week, the next week only 20 hours. So the money's not steady. It's not coming in um, steadily. Okay. Uh, Ampro? Want to read all of that right there? Their apartment? Their apartment in is government subsidized. Uh, things were so tight at one point that they shared a cell phone. But isn't marrying young and poor and then working your way up the time honor way? That seems terrifying at this point. Sheridan says it's hard enough to work up just on your own. Instead of marriage being a vehicle into adulthood and stability, young adults uh, um, now see it's, uh, it as the cherry on top. The thing you do once you are established and financially secure. The problem is that's become harder to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So they're kind of painting a picture that, you know, their financial situation is a little bit difficult right now. Uh, their apartment is government subsidized. So if something is subsidized, it means somebody is helping you out with something like money usually. So the government's helping them. Here the way that works in the United States is if you qualify based on your income and how many people are in your family, you might get like, you know, some help with your rent. So maybe if your rent is $800, you only pay half of that or something like that. So things um, were so tight, so that is talking about finances, were tight means they don't have a lot of extra money. Uh, they were sharing a cell phone, so they could not afford to each have their own uh, cell phone. All right, so this is their question. <laughs> you know, in the past, maybe getting young, married, and being poor, and then working your way up. You know, we have that expression, to work your way up, usually means to get, get out of poverty, you know, get a job, get a better job, get a better job, that kind of thing. Uh, that used to be more how it would go. You would get married before you had that opportunity to work your way up, and then you would just do that together as a couple. That's the time-honored way, so the, the, oh, the way that has been happening for a long time. Time. That's what that means. Time honored means people have been doing it for a long time. But she says that seems terrifying. That's like crazy or that's scary at this point. It's hard enough to work up just on your own. So to get a good job and to you know improve your life, it's hard if you're trying to do it just by yourself. So it, she thinks it might be harder if you're trying to do it with two people. <laughs> okay, so instead of it being a vehicle into adulthood and stability, meaning financial, stability. Um, people see it as a cherry on top, so like it's kind of an extra thing. Once you get established, you know, you have a job, you have money coming in, you're financially secure, then you might think about the possibility of getting married, but that's harder to do the, these days with the economy the way it is. Okay, Alona, you can read those all the way down to there. 50 years ago. Uh, where are we? Fifty years ago, when people graduated. But I don't have it on my screen. Oh, you don't? Hmm. Because the apartment is government subsidized. Oh, <laughs> that's that's weird. Let me move it down and see if it moves it down for you. How about that? Click on someone else icon and then go back. And then to go back to me. Yeah. yeah. Like click on different people and then now do you see? No, it's still the same. Hmm, that's weird. I don't know. Do you have the I don't know. do you have the document opened? Yes. Okay. I just highlighted it where it says fifty years ago. You see that? Two paragraphs there. Maybe I can, uh, I'll stop screen sharing it and then share it again. Maybe that'll help. Yeah. Can you guys see it? Amparo, can you see it? Yes. Oh, my. <laughs> How about now, Aldona? No. Are you on an iPad or something? Or on a computer? 
I think you have to refresh the, your page. Yeah, you might have to refresh your page. Okay, Shabazz, why don't we go to you and then we'll come back to Aldona. Uh, I guess something happened <laughs> with my computer as well. <laughs> <laughs> it got hanged. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I can't even move my cursor. Okay. I'm gonna save us, I'm gonna Okay. Fifty years ago when people graduated high school, they could go out and get a manufacturing job and have a pretty good wage, you know, some benefit. Says Ariel Copperberg, mm -hmm. a professor of soci sociology at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. But those wages have been falling since the 1970s, mm -hmm. she says. And the unemployment rate for high school grad graduates today is about double what it is for those with a college degree. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, basically, you know, people could get manufacturing jobs, like in a car factory or something like that, and they had a pretty good wage. So a wage is how much you get paid, like, per hour, uh, and, and that was pretty good. You know, people could afford to get married, have a home, buy a car, that kind of stuff. But those wages have been falling. So they have been decreasing, going down. So people aren't really making great money nowadays. Certainly if you just, you know, work um, for minimum wage, you can't afford to buy a house or have a car or anything like that, really. Um, doo -doo -doo. All right. Aldona, is it working for you now? Yes, yes. Okay, do you want to go ahead and read where it says Cooperberg says? Uh, Cesar Cooperberg, Cooper Beck, a profes professor of sociology at the University of North California, Greensboro. Is, is no, it, is the, it? Next, the next no. Skip, skip that where it says, but those wages have been falling, and then go to the next paragraph. Cooperberg says it's. Maybe I can uh, I'll make it a different color, then you'll be able to see it easier. Can you see it with the red? No, I see it in Greece. But those pages <laughs> have been falling since the 1970s. <laughs> you see it? Okay. And the unemployment rate for high school yeah, keep going. graduates today is about double what it's for those with a de college degree. All right, now keep going. Yes, but I can see the text. Ah. Oh. You can't see it on my screen or on your screen? On your screen. Oh, can you see it on yours, though, with the if you open up the document? I have this open, but, but, but I can... can you <laughs> that's see the, that's the, a good very, idea, Abra. <laughs> the very chat. Are you mm. able to see it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody, everybody <coughs> chat. She copied it and pasted it over there. Okay, mm -hmm. I see it. Okay. Kaberberg says it's not that lesser educated couples who don't want to wed. She studied the labor market in 20 cities and in cities that had Better labor markets for people with less education. Whoops. Uh, okay, keep going. The, the Pew Research Center also recently looked at how the labor market is affecting the marriage market in different cities and found that never married women overwhelmingly say it's very important that the potential, potential spouse have a steady job but only eight every a hundred single women among adults age ages twenty five to thirty four. Mm -hmm. Copperberg queries that the changing economy is making marriage almost a luxury. Something only for the better. Oh. Okay, good. All right, so I'm just going to go over, let's see, overwhelmingly. So it just means a lot of 
people, all, all of, and not all, but a lot, that like a majority of these women who have never been married, they say it's very important that their potential spouse, so somebody who they might want to marry, that person should have a steady job, so a good job that they're not going to lose, that they're not going to, you know, uh, to have them have them go to half time or something. So a good a steady job just means it's a good job. You can rely on it. You can make sure that it's going to be there for you. Um, <clears throat> but this is an interesting statistic. Only 84 employed single men for every 100 single women. So there aren't enough men who are employed <laughs> for all the single women who want to marry. Uh, guys who have jobs. <laughs> so, I don't know how many guys are single who don't have jobs, but <laughs> all right. So she's worried that this uh, changing economy, this you know, we're kind of getting harder for guys and women, of course, to have jobs and be, especially these what we call steady jobs, one that you can really rely on. Um, if you're re if you're waiting to get married for that, then it's almost like a luxury, something that maybe only. Uh, people who are better off can do. Better off means you're, you're doing better in life. You're, maybe you have more money, more, more opportunities, this type of thing. So now they have this thing where they're calling the marriage divide. So Shabazz, you're back. You want to read? I'm, I'm, I'm here. Okay, good. <laughs> Why don't you read this part? The marriage okay, divide. Yeah. Okay, marriage divide. At the other end of this marriage divide, Dinah and Dave... Oh. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Dinah and Dave Black of Harrisonburg, uh, Virginia, started dating in college and now have graduated degrees and budding careers. Uh, the couple is among the m minority of uh, mm, millennials. What is this? millennials. Millennials. Yeah. Okay, millennials who feel uh, 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 who feel secure enough to say I do. So Dave waited to propose until he got a handle on his student loans. I had the bulk of them paid off at that point, he says, and I felt like I was in a, in a decent place to shell out the additionally money for the for the ring. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, all right. So there's another end. So at the other end, so we're looking at different the way different people look at marriage. There's this other side to marriage where these two people, uh, they're doing quite well. So they started out dating. You know, dating is when you go out with somebody. Um, and now they both have graduate degrees. So that's here in the U.S. That's a master's degree at least. And they have budding careers. So if you have a budding career, it means you're kind of, you might be starting, but it's going to be a good one. So budding is like a flowers. It's kind of blossoming. You know, it's it's maybe they just started, but it's on a good path. They're going to be doing well. That's what it means. Um, the couple is among the minority, so they are not typical. The typical picture of a millennial. A millennial refers to this age group of people in their like uh, mid twenties to early thirties, where they kind of were get, becoming adults around the time of the, the millennium, which is the two, year 2000. So they were just starting to like, you know, turn 18, and now they're in their 20s, early 30s. Uh, and that's why we call them the millennials. It's that age group. Um, so he says they're among the minority of millennials who feel secure enough. So not everybody who's of that age group is secure financially to get married. So uh, he waited to propose. To propose is when you ask somebody to marry you. And he waited until he got a handle on. So to, I wanted to point out this expression, to get a handle on something. So the something is his student loans. But the expression is to get a handle on something. It means to get it under control. So you're taking care of it. It's not out of control. It could be, you know, get a handle on the situation, get a handle on your studies, get a handle on your bank account. You know, you can use it in a lot of different ways. Um, and then he said, I had the bulk of them paid off. So the bulk of them meets the majority. And he's talking about his student loans. And he had them paid off. So he didn't owe um, too much more money because most of his student loans were paid off by that time and so he felt like he was in a decent place to be in a decent place means to be ready you know I'm in an okay place now I can 
shell out the money. So to shell out the money for something means to pay for it. So it's another expression, idiomatic expression, which just means to pay for something. You're going to shell out the money for the concert tickets or for the new car. It just means you're going to pay the money. Okay, um, but I'll, let's move it down so you have a little more there. All right, why don't you read those three paragraphs there. Okay. They were the first in their social circle to get engaged. Now both, uh, 27, neither feels re ready for children just yet. For me, parenthood is such an enormous responsibility, Diana says. And the longer I give myself, I feel like the better prepared I'll be. But that doesn't mean they are not, not planning. They recently bought a four-bedroom house with a big yard out back and good schools nearby. And upstairs is a perfect child's room, complete with a, a secret passage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, um, they're the first in their social circle. So they're friends. The first you know, of their friends to actually get engaged. That means you promise each other you're going to get married in the future. That's when you get engaged. Um, but they're not ready for children. They think it's a, a gigantic or huge or enormous responsibility. Uh, she wants to give herself more time so she'll feel more prepared. Um, but it doesn't mean that they're not planning for kids. That's what they mean. So they bought a four-bedroom house. That's a, that's a big house <laughs> for two people. And uh, a big yard out back. So the big yard means like the grassy area. Maybe they have a garden or something. Um, and then, of course, parents look for good school. So they're thinking about the future of having uh, kids. All right. Uh, Aldona. You want me to copy and paste it into the chat box there? Yes. Um, this door goes here goes to the attic, says Diana. So far, so for a kid that would feel very Harry Potter, Potter tastic, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, two s different stories. Two couples who each say they're acting in the best interest of their children or future children. But researcher Copperberg mm -hmm. equality in the next generation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, attic is just like a top room up above, like in your house. If you have like a special mm -hmm. extra room up at the top, um, people usually put stuff in their store things, like boxes full of stuff. And so they think it would be great for kids. It would feel very like they're Harry Potter. Fantastic just means like fantastic, you know, really great, but related to the idea of the Harry Potter story, you know, how Harry Potter was living. Um, okay, so she's concerned. So these are two different stories of two different couples, you know, they're, they're doing different things. One couple had kids first, and the other couple is getting married first. Um, but she's saying, this researcher, she's a little bit concerned because she thinks it might mean even more inequality so in meaning not equal so some kind of inequality in the next generation related to their their children all right so uh, Shabazz so uh, from the problem she says okay yeah the, the, the problem she says is not that people are having kids without being married it's that in the US on average, unweed couples are far more likely to split up by the time their children is five. The child is five, mm -hmm. and research shows that that can have a host of negative impacts on children. It leads to some behavioral problem. Uh, Schepperberg says it can lead to academic problem. Just leads to kind of. Mm, uh, less of a sense of stability which hurts their chances later on. Of course, it doesn't always happen that way. Mm -hmm. So she's a little bit concerned about the kids, that's what she's saying, because um, if you look at the statistics, unwed couples, so people who have not married each other, so they they have kids together but they're not married, they're far more likely to split up. So to split up means to, you know, separate, to, to not be together anymore, not live together. And this could have or 
does have uh, a host of. A host of means just a lot. A lot of negative impacts. So negative effects on children. And she explains some of them. Sometimes it leads to, so it, you know, it causes kind of uh, some behavioral problems. So maybe the children act out or something. Or sometimes they have trouble in school. So that would be academic problem. Or sometimes they just don't feel, they don't have a sense of stability, you know, feeling like they know they have a house and people care about them, that kind of stuff, which hurts their chances later on. So to hurt your chances, what chances of what, like a successful life, you know, doing well, that kind of thing. But of course, that doesn't always happen. All right. Earlier this year, okay, Amparo. Earlier this year, Philip on the road landed a steady steady job uh, as a car technician at Walmart. He says that made him think differently about proposing to Sheridan. I know every week I will be, I will be working 40 hours, he says. I'm not making the most money in the world, but we are not financially tight. Mm -hmm. All right, so he landed a steady job. So to land a job means to get it to get a job. So he got a, a steady job, so that's good, which, and now he is considering proposing, so asking her to marry him. Uh, they're not financially tight anymore, so they have a little bit of extra money. They have what we call wiggle room, so they don't have to be so tight. Uh, he, Aldona, I'll copy it here. This is the last part. Uh, where it says, okay. we have diapers. <laughs> we have diapers and everybody eats. Sheridan says laughing and we can drive if we need to drive somewhere. By the end of his first month of the new job, Underwood had brought a ring. Sheridan said yes. Since then, he's landed on an even better job and the couple has set a wedding date next June. <laughs> okay, so he got a better job and now they're going to get married. Alright, so we have about a good 10 minutes or so to talk about this. I want to hear from you guys. Um, for, I don't. If you have any questions with the English, of course you can ask me. But if you don't, we just. I want to hear what you guys think about this and what is happening in your countries related to young people getting married, having babies, that kind of thing. So, Amparo, why don't we start with you? What's what's commonly happening for people in this age in this age group these days? Well, it's almost the same. Uh, people who have a degree or something, they they, they think twice be, before getting married because mm -hmm. uh, they want to be uh, to get a, a, a better job and they have a, another plan for their life. Uh, if they have been um, studying for a while mm -hmm. and then they they want to get enough money to have a good car, a good house. And then they they are just postponing the the, the, the marriage. Mm -hmm. But if they are just students from the high school, they don't think twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just get, uh, get married, not get married, <laughs> just get pregnant. Get pregnant, okay. <laughs> then the, the problem is for the the family because uh, yeah. most of the time the the the, the couple is just a, a young man like like her. That just is studying at the high school, and then their grandparents have a new, a new mm. member to to educate, to give, a, to feed, because it, they don't have the 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 education to get a job. Mm -hmm. They are under uh, the the legal age to get a job, um, so it's very difficult to to have enough uh, money to. Um, give a good education to your chi uh, your children. Yeah. So it unfortunately it's a vicious cycle. Mm-hmm. Vicious Be cycle. Yeah, because uh, she didn't uh, she didn't finish uh, uh, the, the the high school, or at least she finished just the high school and she didn't study at, at the at the university. So what is the the future for her is just to get. Um, a job with a basic salary, yeah. no more than 340. Mm -hmm. um, the that the, the education that she is going to offer to her daughter or her son mm -hmm. is limited. Um, the uh, she doesn't spend the, the time with uh, her her child, and then it's like uh, the same 
history uh, mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Because they, uh, she, she cannot control uh, her child. Um, <laughs> her child is demanding, uh, why I don't have this, or mm. why I don't have a father here at home. Yeah. So that is a kind of, well, a, a big problem in the society. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, would you say that in the past in Ecuador it was the same though in terms of uh, what they said in the article? It was more common for people to get married first and then have children and get their jobs and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In the past, yes. Mm -hmm. In the past, yeah. Kind of working on your, kind of setting up your life earlier and then working to have a life versus having getting your life and then getting married. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Aldona, what about in Spain? What's happening with young people these days? In Poland. <laughs> oh, you're in Poland? Yes. Uh, oh my gosh, I kept thinking you were from Spain. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. No, señora, no, se de España. No, señora. Oh, no, señora. <laughs> Good one. Okay, well, oh my god, that's weird. Okay, um, what's happening in Poland? <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> correcting me. <laughs> no problem. Uh, well, I think there is one thing that I don't understand in all this stuff. Okay. It's oh, okay. when people okay don't have money, then they want to get married because they lack money, right? And on the other hand, there are couples that got married in a very boisterous way mm -hmm. with very with wedding with lots of people very luxur luxurious yeah uh, style with honeymoon and all and they split very very quickly split up very quickly uh -huh, uh -huh. they get divorced they get divorced uh huh they split up that's good yeah yes so i don't know how to explain that that one people one Yeah, your your sound is just cutting out money. a little bit. They have big, great yeah. weddings, and yeah. then they divorced. Maybe they like didn't take it so seriously, or something. You think? Probably they don't know how to resolve the problems. They have to overcome problems. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Because, okay, in every marriage, the life is not always. Spread it with roses, right? <laughs> Sometimes you have to just um, put your leg on the truck, thrones, thrones uh -huh. of the road. You have to put it And your... yes, yeah. And usually the problems are to reverse the couple, the marriage. Yeah. Yes. And. So I don't know why 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 do people try to base its its future on only money on economics? It's a little bit I don't know incomprehensible to me. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Like, uh, what's your opinion? People should, if they love each other, just get married and make it work, or or not? Yes, I'm a very traditional person. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I w and I would see it with getting married first and then have children and mm -hmm. find a job. Yeah. That should be. But I know that nowadays the reality is a little bit different and mm. Plans are or might be spots. You cut out a little bit there. Are you back? Um, oh, there yes, you I'm yeah. here. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so, in Poland, are young people getting married or are they waiting? Um, they get married, but I think divorces are like a plague. Oh, I see. So it's happening a lot. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And. Who suffers most are the children, not sure. that they don't have their parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shabazz, what about you? What do you think about this? Um, uh, you're probably a millennial. 
<laughs> Shabazz. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, no, uh, uh, I'm Muslim. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, so that makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Major difference. So you, yeah. you know, Muslims have quite difficult. Uh, um, I mean, quite strict rules. Okay. So we follow mm, we follow Islamic rules. The uh, first of all, the couples they they don't live uh, together. I mean, if they're not married. Yeah. So they can't live together. I mean, they. So if they want to have child, the first they have to get married, and then they they can have child as well. Okay. So so. I guess they have, uh, they can have a lot of, they can have a lot of plans, you know, uh, yeah. b before they get married. So, hmm. so these kind of things are not happen. I don't think that these kind of things happening in Muslim countries. Like, uh, they, uh, like the problem you were discuss, like the problem we were discussing in this paragraph. So, yeah, I'm, I'm curious though. I'm still wondering, even in a Muslim country for Muslim people. Um, is there a common, um, not common, but like a, a typical age where people are getting married, and has that mm -hmm. changed? Like, is it are people waiting, or are they still getting married like young? Mm, yeah, they 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 get married uh, in the age of around uh, twenty five to thirty usually. Okay. But, uh, mm, but I guess everyone can decide. I mean. Uh, if the if if he and uh, uh, and he and she are able to to do stuff with each other, I mean, the, the, if they are able to support to each other financially or like this, I mm -hmm. mean, it, it, usually our family are also involved involved in. Oh, you in, get help from your family. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, even even but choosing uh, our partner as well. Uh huh. I mean, okay. Our, our, our family get involved in, yes. in this matter. I see. In this matter of selecting or uh, the bride or like this, I mean, the choosing the family because usually uh, the the I mean, if I'm a guy, yeah. I would uh, I would like to spend my life with my parents, mm -hmm. Until, mm -hmm. even until the death. I mean, usually in the Muslim country, it's happening. Yeah. But uh, but the girls move to their husband home. I mean. Uh, uh, I mean, usually it happens. So, well, while uh, if I'm if I'm a guy, so I would like to um, marry to a girl, and she will come to my home, and she would stay with my parents. If 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 you want to stay alone, it's okay. But usually, usually in a Muslim country, uh, the girl, I mean, uh, the guy, they they stay with their parents. Mm, I mean, okay. Yeah, yeah, because we respect a lot to our parents. Mm -hmm. So, so that's why. Um, if I I don't know um enough about this, so I'm going to ask you. Um, uh, in in for Muslim people, do you get divorced, or is that not common, or is it allowed, or not no. allowed, or? No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, the the divorce is a common. I mean, it usually uh doesn't happen uh, uh in Muslim people, but but yeah, you can get divorced if 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 you people are not happy. Okay. The couple is not happy to each other. Uh -huh. They can, they can, or it's, it's okay. a common thing. Okay. So problem. What yeah. happened? Yeah. You don't yeah. like the bride that your your parents select for you. Uh, no, my parents doesn't. My parents they do not select, but uh, we have to take permission, like uh, like mm -hmm. you people do. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. they do select, but uh, you know, uh, we have our own choices, but uh, but we have to ask them. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to. Get their uh, permission as well, mm -hmm. uh, because they they grow us they grow us up uh, uh, in 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 every matter. They they they've been supporting uh, as as I as I'm giving you my example. Yeah. My, till now I'm 22 and they 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 are still supporting me. I'm living with my parents, and uh, I do not work. I just study. I'm I'm just done with my studies. Uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I um, I'm, I'm telecommunication engineer. They 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 did support me in every matter. So mm -hmm. at least it's my uh, mm, it would be my pleasure to ask my parents uh, in every when I when I do pick something. Mm -hmm. So it would be pleasure for me to ask them mm -hmm. to get their permission. Yeah, I know it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I if I take or not. But but uh, for 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 just. Uh, for for my player, I would ask them. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. It's happening mm -hmm. in, in every Muslim country, in every, I mean, this is just common thing. Yeah. Not a big thing. Yeah. Okay, so a son must bring his uh, bride to home, yes? And they uh, only yeah, to, to home. To home. Yeah, we can live alone. We can live alone. It's a, it's a common sense. We can live alone, but but uh, but usually people take their bride to home. Uh, they they live with their parents. I mean, yeah, we have separate rooms, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but do you know what I mean? So uh, I mean, that we use common home. Uh, yeah. So. So what happened when your your children? There, they are in time to get married. Are you going to still live in with your parents? Uh, usually, uh, usually they leave their home. I mean, uh, at the time it depends. It depends if you if you are able to stay with the, with uh, with your parents. Uh, if if the, if your uh, children grow up and uh, you think you can't survive in this home. I mean, it's a small home or a big home. It depends. Yeah. I mean, if you can move, you can move. If you mm -hmm. want to stay, stay. That's it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But usually people stay with their parents. I told you. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that mm -hmm. helps al also with the financial situation, and then when you do have yeah. kids, that helps with raising mm -hmm. the children so that the younger people mm -hmm. are working. Yeah. So it's exactly. definitely Exa sure. exactly. Uh huh. We we usually spend our life with with our family. I mean. <laughs> yeah. So that's a lot different than like in the United States. Uh, exactly. People want to be very independent and separating mm -hmm. from their parents. Yeah. And the parents mm -hmm. don't want to have to support their kids. You know. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. different. Yeah. 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 I would uh, as now right now my parents they they do not work. My mm -hmm. my my. My mother is a housewife, and my 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 father is a businessman. But but right now I'm I'm done with my studies, so now I have to I have to get a job. Then mm -hmm. I will support my parents. Mm -hmm. I mean I, I won't let them to to work mm -hmm. uh, uh, after I get a job. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's just a respect and uh, honor to yeah. parents. That's it. Um, but I know. Yeah. Which country but, uh, are you from, Shabazz? I'm from. Uh, I live in. Uh, in Dubai as well as Pakistan. I'm uh, basically I'm from Pakistan, but sometimes I do live in Dubai as well. I see. Well. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. But you may you may have four wives, yes? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Uh, we usually have single wives. It's just a misconception. Uh, I mean, it's just a misunderstanding. Uh, I mean, I don't know why every every non-Muslim people. I mean, like people like you always uh, always have a misconception about about uh, about the marriage of uh, uh, Muslim people. Uh, I mean, usually, I mean, I'm telling you literally. Usually, yeah. they have they only have one wife. My pa my parents, my fathers, they only have they only have one wife. My mother, mm -hmm. and they usually have one wife. But but at weekend. Yeah, the Islam. I'm talking about the teaching of Islam. Oh, okay. It, uh, it allows us to we can get married to four at a time if we can support. Support. You have uh, to have money. <laughs> and all of yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. If we have money, we have a lot of money. If if you think you can financially support, you can you can equally um, uh, react to a, each and every wife. So you can you can get married to four. But but right now you have. And all of them live together with your parents. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> the, it's not. It's not that. So they kill you. <laughs> they kill you together. I mean, they, he, he. Uh, I guess they will. They will live. Uh, they will live separate. Yeah. Separate in a separate home. Uh, yeah. If, if the husband, he can, he can support. Uh, he's is financially strong, and he he think he can support to uh, uh to. To have four wives, so yeah, he can. But but usually, I have never uh, never seen in my life uh, a man with four wives. You can imagine now. <laughs> I ha uh, we only have one. I mean, usually. Yeah. Okay. It's really. It's and you allow it for her to work or not? Uh, yes, obviously, she mm. is allowed to work. In, she can, um, yeah. She's like, um, I mean, the the same. Uh, she's she she just allowed to work. She work everywhere. I mean, doesn't matter. Okay. She can work. Yeah. 
All right. Well, thanks, guys. So we got a little bit of an education from Shabazz here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm 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 I'm, I'm different because I'm Muslim. Yeah, you have yes, kind different of than us. Culture. Yeah, yeah, different. Uh huh. So cool. Well, thanks so for I guess sharing. We have, that. we have a magic. Yeah, I mean, interesting class today. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing up, you guys. It was kind of quiet just by myself for a little while, so I'm glad you guys came. <laughs> to class. So, okay, guys, I'll let you go. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Um, and Bye. Enjoyed your class. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Goal at this time. So that's what we're going to be reading about. Um, as usual, I put it here. So I see we do have some people who want to read along with us. Uh, so I'm going to start reading. If you want to join the class, you, you know, it doesn't matter if you had a reservation or not because now uh, people can just join. And if you want to read along with me, then you can join. Otherwise, I'm going to read and I'm going to give the class for you guys. And anybody can join at any time. So um, I'm going to get started here. For more millennials, it's kids first, marriage maybe. Decades ago, an oops pregnancy might have meant a rush to the altar, but when Michelle Sheridan got pregnant three years ago, the topic of marriage never came up with her boyfriend, Philip Underwood, whom she lives with in Frederick, Maryland. In, if anything, it was the opposite. Okay, so I like to just read a little bit at a time and then go over some of the words and phrases. And one of the great things about the reading class is this is it. This is real English. This is the English that you should want to be able to read. This should be your goal because this is how you use English in real life. You go to a website, you read an article, and then you talk about it. And that's what people do. You know, in real life, you have conversations about stuff on website right now, and you're just looking at the classes that are available, and you click on this class, what you're seeing is a live streaming video. So this is a, it's a class and we're going to be having the class for one hour. Each verbling class lasts for one hour. Um, and each class is different. Sometimes we have classes um, like I'm having this one now with the reading. Sometimes I just did a speaking class. Uh, sometimes we have a listening class. So it just really depends on what you want to do. Uh, you can join any class, any time, and the way you join is just by clicking on the button. So I'm just waiting to see who's going to show up. We did have a lot of reservations for this class. Um, if you're a member on Verbling, one of the things you can do is make a reservation. So if you're looking at your schedule and you say, oh, I want to take a class you know, tonight at 9 o'clock, then you can just look and see who's teaching and you can choose which one you want to attend and then make a reservation. However, the reservations only are good for the first two minutes of the class. After that, then anybody can join. So it can be a good idea to make a reservation uh, for a class if you know for sure you want to be there and you want to go to that class. But if you're seeing this video right now, for example, um, you can type into the Verbling chat box and then that way we will uh, see or I will see what's going on over there. All right, so I'm going to do the screen share here and talk about the article that we're going to read today. It's from NPR.org. So NPR.org is a uh, public radio station here in the United States that's played um, pretty much everywhere around the United States. Local radio stations have NPR shows on their stations. And it's also a website where you can go and get um, information related to lots of different topics. Uh, this is kind of a special series here, and it's called For More Millennials, It's Kids First, Marriage Maybe. So it's a kind of an interesting thing that's happening here in the United States with the younger generation of people, people in their 20s, for example, right now, maybe their early 30s, but mostly their mid-20s. Mid uh, so this article is talking about this idea that for a lot of these people, this age group, uh, they're having, actually, they're having their kids first before they're getting married. Getting married doesn't seem to be 
their number one. If you're not sure and you don't know, uh, usually it's okay to just come at the time that the class is going to start and then join at that point. So um, that's what a lot of people do and that usually works. Sometimes we do have a full class. Certain times of the day can be kind of crowded uh, and other times are not uh, as busy. So it just depends on uh, what you're wanting to do and and all that. So I'm going to um, get started here. So if you guys want to join me for this class, I don't know where everybody is who made the, the reservations. Where did you guys go? <laughs> I know there is one other class uh, going on right now in Verblin, but it also doesn't have uh, very many people in it. So I'm wondering where everybody went. Um, let me just put up in the screen share what we're doing. Sometimes it happens that people are having trouble and they're not getting into the class. So I don't know is, if anybody is having any trouble uh, trying to join. Let me ask you guys. I'm writing in the burbling chat there. So another thing about burbling is if you um, are not a member you get to watch the class for free. You don't get to come in and participate, but you get to watch the class, and you can also uh, write in the Verbling chat box. So if you're watching, hi everybody, welcome to another English class here on Verbling.com. My name is Lisa, and I'm one of the English teachers here at Verbling. And in this hour, we're going to be doing a reading class. So we're going to be reading an article and talking about it as well. One of the nice things about the reading class is it's a good way for you to learn some new vocabulary, uh, practice your grammar structures, learn something interesting, you know, by reading the article, and also get to speak. So the reading class involves a lot of different things that are happening for you that are really good for um, your English fluency so that you can improve your English, your, your understanding, your comprehension, your listening skills, your speaking. Um, so a lot of things are happening in the reading class which are really great for you. Okay, so if you want to join me and you have a reservation, then of course you can use the reservation now. If you don't have a reservation, then that's okay. You can just um, wait and then join the class with using the join class button as soon as you see it. The way it works here on Verbling is you do need to be a member to join the class. So if you're at the verbling.com 